All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the break. What we're going to do right now is finish up this calculator. So we need some styles, but before we even need styles, we need to hook up what number is displayed in the buttons and what the action does. So as we can see here, the properties inside the button component, we are going to have symbol, calls, and action. So what I'm going to do is in the, well first, the first thing that we can do really simply and see it is get rid of that one. We're going to open up curly braces and we're going to say this dot props dot symbol and hit save and now you're going to see all the symbols have just populated into the buttons and that's exactly what we want. Now another thing is that we need to rig up the action. So this props action is a function that takes in the symbol and passes the symbol over to the button's action function, which in this case is add to current or reset. So we're going to uh, create an on click handler. We're going to take the E parameter for no reason, just so that we can um, use the arrow, I mean it would be much more accurate to do this. An empty parameters list and then we're going to say this dot props dot action and we're going to pass through this dot props dot symbol. We're going to save it and now when we press this nothing's happening So let's troubleshoot this a little bit. Right. In add to current, let's go ahead and console log symbol save. And then we're going to open up our console here. Alright, so a few things. And good thing for JavaScript for catching this. We don't use class, we use class name. Save this. And then another thing is that within a, uh, a mapping function, the rendered component needs to have a unique key, which is just going to be the index. And that's why we're passing in i there. All right. Now another thing is that we're setting a value here without actually setting a non-change event. So let's set default value. Actually, no, we need that set to value. So, because if we do this, right, it's not gonna update it. So we do need value. And then we're still not getting any action here happening. So what we're going to do is there's some disconnect between this prop here calling the action. Oh, I know what it is. We forgot the parameters and symbol. So let's save this. Uh, and then there we go. There we go. So we're getting input good stuff. Uh, we do need to change a few things. So if this current state is zero and well there's a there's going to be a few different ways we can do this. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how right now. For right now let's get that styled up a bit. So if a column is two all right, so let's go over to this. And in the div itself, we're going to need to add a class name that's going to be dependent on a variable. And that's going to be calls. So this props calls is going to be either one, two, or three. And so what we're going to need to do is instead of opening up quotations here, 
where we're going to have to use that value or that variable, we're going to open up curly braces. And now in here, the way that we're going to do this, we're going to embed the variable within a text string. And in ES6 with React, the way that we do this is inside these curly braces, you're going to need to find the backtick key on your keyboard. It's usually directly below the escape key, and it's going to look something like this when you do it. What we're going to do now is type in regular text. So in this case, it's going to be column dash. And then within here, we're going to embed the variable uh, this props calls. So we're going to need to put a dollar sign and then two curly braces. And we can now write JavaScript within this little tag here. So we're going to say this dot props dot calls. And I'm going to save it. And now if we look, we can see column three. Now column three is going to have to be uh, 75 percent wide. So width is going to be 75 percent and float is going to be left. So now we need to add a CSS file. So within here, we're going to create a new file in the CSS directory called style.css. Going to hit enter, and we're going to say column-3. And this is a class, so we need that dot at the front. Width 75% float left. Column 2. Um, we're going to say width is going to be 50% and float left, sorry, float left. There we go. And column-1 is going to be width 25% and float left. I'm going to hit save. This is going to refresh. No, it's not because we haven't included the style sheet within our application. So in the app.js file, I'm just going to close this sidebar for a moment. We're going to import in the current directory, look for CSS, style.css, going to end it with a semicolon and hit save. And there we go. This is our calculator's very basic layout, but all the buttons are far too small. So what we're going to do is we're going to style the buttons all together. So I'm going to add a button class, not even a class. Actually, I think we did use a class that we can key into. So I'm going to copy calc button here, calc dash button. And I'm going to write button. So this is going to be the element we're targeting. And then this is the class name of the element. So if there's a button with this class name, this is the style that it's going to get. So we're going to need to play around with this a bit. So I'm going to save this. And we should get a styleable element here for button, calc button. I'm going to say width is going to be 100%. And that's already looking a lot better. I'm going to say padding. Uh, actually, let's go with height. And let's say 100 pixels. That's looking a lot better. Border is going to be 2 pixels solid. We're going to make this gray. Actually, a lighter gray. darker and then the background is going to be lighter. There we go. Now the font size itself is going to need to come up to maybe 22 pixels or 32. 
There we go. We are making a lot of progress here just by adding a few simple styles. And then the color is going to be something not so dark. Um, okay. Did I just, I think I just stumbled upon something really interesting here, which I definitely want to explain. So hex colors come with two variants that you can use. So I'm going to set uh, just a property here so we can see. Uh, this is going to be white. This is three values. There are hexadecimal from zero all the way up to F. So the property would be zero or like each each one of these characters can be arranged from zero all the way up to F. And this is called hexadecimal. Now along this range, zero is going to be uh, the darkest and F is going to be the lightest or the most of that color. So in this key right here of FFF, you have three values that are all set to the lightest and that's RGB. So for instance, if I wanted R all the way to the top and no GB, then I would go F00 and that would result in a color with F or the, the rather G or R, the red, being full tilt and absolutely no um, green or blue in it. And then again you can add F over here and you'll get full red, full blue and no green and that results in pink. And then if you add F here that's full red, full green, full blue, you now have white. Okay. Sorry for that tangent there. Uh, so that's what hex is. Now to fine tune it, each one of these digits can be, uh, you can use two digits to define each RGB item. So if I wanted to use the six character format, we now have white, but now, this, these two characters represent red, these two characters now represent green, and the last two represent blue. So if I want full on red, I do this, all right? And now we have this range. So the first, uh, think about it like counting, when you get to 20s, the second digit is going to change uh, for smaller increments and that's exactly the same here. So if I start changing the second parameter I can go all the way down to F0 before it flips around again and starts going EF that would be the next one down and then EE etc etc. Alright so that's how hex colors work and I just found a really interesting uh, CSS thing that I didn't even know was integrated. And if you guys knew this, then I'm terribly sorry for uh, wasting your time. Skip ahead about a minute. But there, we can use a four-digit hex code, and the last digit is defining opacity. So... One there is not very opaque, but if I set that to five, it's fully opaque. So if I were to set F001, kind of opaque, two, and as I go up, it gets more and more opaque. Um, which is just... That just kind of blew me away there. All right, anyway, 
Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to set this to the color of the buttons. So I'm going to copy uh, all of this and I'm going to paste it right here and save it. And now we've got our buttons. Now the input field needs to change a bit too. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a height equal to 100 pixels. We're going to set the width to 100%. Border is going to be none. Text align is going to be right. And then font size is going to be, uh, I don't remember, oh, we set that to 32 pixels. All right. Actually, let's add a bit of padding. So let's say 10 pixels. And that's making it too wide. Um, I wonder if I set position to relative or max width to 100 view width. Still going to do that. So we're going to do then set width to auto, and then we're going to say margin right zero, and then float right. All right. So now the margin right. Let's set to ten pixels, twenty pixels, fifty. All right. There we go. So this is our, let me go into app, see what class name we gave that, result. So input.result. I'm going to copy this here, get rid of that dead rule, save. And there we go. So now we have a mostly stylized calculator in React that is using the state up here. And what we need to do is we need to set um, sort of operations in a flow. So the, if we were to look at how a calculator like this handles it, I can type two, four, five times and it saves the value and then puts a times uh, sign here and then the next uh, input that I put in sets that. All right. So we're going to do something very, very similar. So what we're going to need is, I think we can do it the array way. I'm going to use previous here and I'm going to need to render that out. Uh, kind of floating above this. So I want to put in an if condition and if you know this state I can't do it like this though okay I'm just gonna write the condition here itself just like we did in the past so this dot state dot previous length is over zero we're gonna put a question mark so if that rings true we're gonna do something else and we define else by that little colon. We're going to create a div class name floaty uh, last, sure. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to this dot state dot previous, and we're going to get the last item out of it. So this dot state dot previous dot length minus one. Then we're going to close that div. So I'm going to save this. And what we need to do is when we press on divide times minus or plus, these need to have a different action than all of these other buttons. So add to current is going to test if 
Uh, let's create an array of that of all the possible symbols that we want to do something different with. And then it was a capital X. So if this dot index of symbol is more than minus one, we're going to do something. Uh, and if it's not, we're going to do the same old uh, add to current. So I'm going to save. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the current operation or the state current, and we're going to add that to the uh, previous array. So I'm going to let previous equals this dot state. So we're going to get the previous uh, array. We're going to do previous dot concat and I'm going to this dot state dot current plus symbol and then we're going to set the state. So this dot set state um, previous and we can either define that as a property and then the value here like so like we mostly always do but if it's the same name so where we've got that variable from the state we don't have to do this we can set it like this and what this will do is it will use that for a key name and it will use the value of previous as the value so I'm gonna save this I'm gonna hit uh, save and then we're going to say 65 times and it didn't see that happen uh, maybe let's try and find our floaty no. All right, let's go ahead and look at React. And the previous array is still nothing, so this is not working. Add to current symbol. So let's push instead of concat. Let me try that. So we're definitely passing that check there 65 times. There we go. Just couldn't concatenate it. So then this floaty bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to style this really quick. I'm going to say position absolute. Right is going to be 50 pixels. Uh, Z index is going to be 99. Nine and then top is going to be about 10 pixels and the color is going to be gray and there we go so floaty last is going to be styled as such save this and now another thing that we need to do is if this dot current is just zero and I mean we could do like that right so if zero and if symbol is not a dot so what we're gonna say is if this dot state dot current equals zero uh, so a little note on this, we're using the three equal signs and it's going to test the value and the type. So this is a string where the value is zero. This is the basically required. So if it's zero and symbol is not equal to dot, we're going to do the same thing that we're currently doing. Um, Actually, no, that's not a dot. It will just return symbol. So it's going to set it. 
let me save this. Show you. So this is zero, and when I hit six, it's going to change the input to six. Else, we need to have that concatenated um, this dot state dot current, and then plus the symbol. So I'm going to save it, and now we can type sixty-five. You know, and it replaced that zero. Take away, and this is a good setup. See this? Now when we hit a number where the last operation was a, uh, a you know, one of these, we need to do a check. So if one of these when we set the state, we also need to set replace next. So we're going to need a new property in the state. Uh, next is reset. It's going to be false. And then when this is true, when we enter one of these values, we're going to set next is reset equal to true and then I'm going to save this and we need to catch that in here. So the way that we're going to do that is going to be if oh, we can actually key into that right there. So I'm going to wrap this into uh, parentheses and then I'm going to use an or statement. This dot state next is reset. So we're going to save this. And then we're going to say next is reset. It's going to be false. I'm going to save it. And then we'll go over what I've just done in just one moment. Let me show you guys first. 65 plus 24. So the flow of this right here, let me reset it, and this doesn't do anything right now. Uh, let me go up to reset, results, oh, current, yeah, that's right, current is going to be zero. Uh, should we also remove the previous? I, I feel like we should. Previous, basically that C button is going to reset the uh, app altogether. Uh, so I guess, again, we should do next is reset, just in case they reset under a certain circumstance. Um, all right, so we've got 65 plus 24. We can reset it. There we go. And this is all managed. Now that equal sign, we're going to have to do something uh, different. And I think we've... Uh, all right, add to current. So instead of on equal, we're going to add to current, we're going to say calculate. I'm going to save. And then what we're going to calculate is going to be uh, 54 plus 32. All right, so in this instance, what we're going to calculate, we're going to take the current value, and we're going to take this. And let me check if we can do something really unsafe here. We can, we can evaluate that. That's exactly what we're going to do. It's really not safe, but to cut corners right now, um, that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, when the equal is set, we need a method called calculate. It's going to take in the symbol. We really don't care about the symbol, but just with the way that we've rigged up the button to pass you know, that to the action, we're going to have to take it in anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the last from the previous array. We're going to get the current. We're going to evaluate it and set that to the current and erase the previous, essentially ending up with a result. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change the symbol of the multiply from that to that just because. Uh, let's go ahead and get this done. So 
from the state, I'm going to get current, previous, and next is reset from this dot state. Now I'm going to say current is going to be equal to, um, well, we're going to need to do some error checking here. So if there is a previous, so if previous dot length is greater than zero, then we're going to move forward and we're going to say current equals previous previous dot length minus one. So we're going to get the last array item in the previous array. So current is that um, plus current. And we're going to need to evaluate this. So now that I've got those two strings concatenated, we're going to do. I'm going to make sure I'm getting a string uh, while I'm using these operators in here. I wouldn't want those to uh, interfere with the evaluation. And then I'm going to wrap that in an eval method like so. And then we're going to call this dot set state on current previous and next is reset. It's going to be equal to uh, true. So let's go ahead and save this. All right, let's see what this can do. So I'm going to say 25 plus 35 equals 60. And we didn't clear previous yet. I forgot. We're going to have to do that. So I'm just setting that to an empty array. So let's say 72 times 12 equals, and uh, something messed up there. Let's reset. 25 plus. Okay. So I forgot when I added this symbol here and replaced the uh, old X symbol. See, we need that in here to do the same thing that we're doing with the other symbols to add to previous and whatnot. So now we have a calculator and it should work. We should be able to first resize and it's all right, I mean, it, it's responsive, but if you load it really big, it's going to look terrible. That's fine for now. Let's go 32 divided by 12 equals 2 points. And I mean, we're getting results. That is good stuff. Let's say 56 plus 2 is 58 plus 652, 710 plus 53 times. Now here's where we're going to have a problem and I don't think we're going to cover that just because we are at about a half hour for this video. And so I think that's where we're going to leave it for right now. Let's see 0 0.223 times 2 equals 0 0.446. There we go you guys. We've just built a calculator using React and the state and the props and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I hope you guys have learned a lot. I'm going to add this code to GitHub, so uh, look in the, dis uh, the description or the uh, discussion to get the link to the project if you want to have it as reference. But go ahead and build a calculator. This is just the beginning. We are going to get into much, much cooler things. Uh, something that I'm interested in that I want to work towards is building a Pong game. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to have to find some user flow uh, to be able to set up multiple clients so it can be a multiplayer game experience on two different clients. So thank you guys for joining me in this video. In the next video, I want to start looking at Bootstrap. I think we might end up uh, slicing a website, static website, into React and use React as a backend for it.